<laughs> Welcome to Sports Econ 101. For those of you joining us for the first show here, here's our format. A bunch of guys sitting around a bar, having drinks without the drinks, talking sports and business with you, the audience listening in. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, well-known sports radio personality, Bruce McGowan, and Vern Glenn of CBS affiliate KPIX-TV in San Francisco. On this show, we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. In addition, we'll ask sports trivia questions, where we're going to be giving away three vacations to the first three callers with the correct answer. Our phone number is 888-660-4495. Write that number down, 888 888- 660-4495 because you're going to use that number to answer the trivia question for three vacations given away during each commercial break. That's right, we're giving away nine vacations during this show. The vacations are not sponsored by the radio station, but by Lighthouse Resort and Marina, which is located one hour northeast of San Francisco. The vacations are free. Their only request, a $75 cleaning fee to cover housekeeping expenses. Their website is lighthouse the number four fun.com. And today's trivia theme is baseball rostered teams. I figured we'd start off kind of easy this week, all right? You guys will you'll get it when we get into it. And uh, what a fun show we have in store for you today, uh, because on today's show, uh, we have a very good friend of mine, Paul Kingsman, who has an amazing story surrounding his bronze medal in the 1988 Olympics. And we'll also, uh, if we have enough time, we're going to get into in the insane salaries for athletes that get awarded and uh, finding out, do they really have a huge impact on ticket prices, or is it a supply and demand economic question? Uh, another thing we might cover is, should athletes be able to collect workers' compensation when they get hurt on the job? What about getting hurt in practice? Okay, we'll talk about that. And again, if we have time, uh, disability insurance for athletes. You guys might, you might remember Brian Bosworth. Remember him? Uh, he was a smart guy. He bought some disability insurance. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, maybe get into a little bit of uh, offensive rebounds. I thought that was kind of interesting about uh, you know the, uh, the fact that offensive rebounds should be quite a, a uh, important part of basketball. And uh, maybe even also get into athletes who make mega millions who are now broke. What's the impact there? And our favorite team, t- Tim Tebow, and what options he's going to have. So again, whatever we don't cover today, we're going to cover in upcoming shows. And this segment of Sports Econ 101 is sponsored by IRA Services Trust Company, providing self-directed retirement accounts with more choices, diversification, and among the lowest fees in the industry. I use them to hold my personal diversified IRA. Check them out at iraservices.com. Don't touch that dial because we'll be right back. You're listening to Sports Econ 101. Okay. <laughs> I think that was right on three, three minutes. Okay. I'm so used to doing like, you know, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12. This is the first time to do three. Oh, that's so cool. Very good. Good job, Tim. Ah, yeah, Tim Tebow should have a, no problem finding a job. Somebody wants, so somebody he's, wants a, uh, he's a pretty good quarterback. Yeah. Freakishly talented but unconventional quarterback. Yeah. Great athlete. Yeah, he sure is. He's not a bad guy. He's just off yeah. in his own world, you know. Hey. I wonder if people penalize him for... Oh, no, really, no question. You know? No question. I mean, not so much the front <laughs> office people, but I think there's a... There's... Even though I'm not I'm anything but a religious person, I just think that when you when you start espousing your personal beliefs in that manner uh, on a regular basis, it's just... There are a lot of people that get kind of... Uh, what, what's this guy saying? <laughs> Wait a minute. But you know. is he throwing in people's faces? Or no, is it just no, no, no. It I don't think so. He's just being very open about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's it's a, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we're seeing more tolerance of. I mean, Jared Collins or Jason Collins comes out yesterday yeah. as the first openly gay yeah. athlete, and, and everybody is you know, embracing, embracing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not that. Big. It, it is a big deal, but it's, it shouldn't be a big deal. You know? Exactly. It's his own lifestyle, and I guess uh, you know people are touchy about such things. No, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but I mean, we all grew up at a time where you know you, that sort of thing is kept in the cl- uh, kept in the closet. Yeah. It's interesting. The Warriors have a their team president, Rick Wells, who I knew slightly when I was working in Seattle. He and his sister were the PR directors of the Sonics. Uh, they're a brother and sister team in their mid twenties, and I never knew this. He went back to New York shortly after I got up to Seattle and worked with the league and worked with the I, about 
20 years, came out here and he came out in the open and said, you know, that he's gay and it wasn't that big a deal, yeah. except for, I mean, to, to most people out there that weren't paying attention, but for him, now every time anybody mentions his name, they want to talk to him about it. what's it like being uh, gay. Fucking gay. <laughs> yeah, what's it like being gay? Uh, that's part of his life, and it's just who he is. Yeah. You know? So um, that's that's an interesting topic, though. I mean, you can get off on that one. Well, that's right. that's. I mean, that yeah. is kind of sport. That's sports and business oh, yeah, too, because yeah. now with uh, I mean, I'm yeah. sure mine, you know, yeah, we, we could do it sometime. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's yeah. just. I mean, it's it's yeah. pretty much news right now. Yeah. So um, yeah. yeah, why don't we get into that in the second? Whatever part you want to do. Yeah. It's your show, you know. I'm just you guys. Come on. Yeah, I just came along for the ride. Exactly. Maybe you can give me a freebie at that the place up north on the coast. I have hey. That sounds like my my kind of uh, trade. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's old, that, that's what that's what he that's what he did. Is He's that right? He all my shows for right now. Oh, yeah. Is it old cabins? Uh, there's thirteen cat. There's there's seven nice cab codes, oh, which nice. are like chalets. Is this and, near the casino? Uh, no, it's only an hour and fifteen minutes from here. So like. Uh, the Dega Bay? In the Delta. Oh, in the Delta. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's, oh. you know, it's 37 acres. Interesting. Uh, you know, there's a lot of camping stuff, a lot of oh, RV cool. stuff. Great fishing. Great. Right. If you like fishing, oh, okay. great fishing. That'd be kind of fun to check out. Oh, yeah. You got activities and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay. So, <coughs> um, we'll, we'll get into it. And then, as he's telling the story, please chime in. Oh, sure. <laughs> no, Oh, yeah. and, <laughs> and if you introduce them, if, if you guys just look over yeah, at me, right. say hi, okay. any way you want. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. So we know. So we know. <coughs> Thank you. Hope I won't get in trouble by wearing a Raider cap here. I don't know why you would. Yeah. They're, the, they're the one Bay Area team, pro team, that is, is really, now they're coming back a little bit. So I think they might have a, a decent year next year. Six six wins. Get a, a good quarterback, that would help. Yeah, Matt Flynn, I don't know, he's not an unknown entity, journeyman, so we'll see. Okay, so we're going to come back, uh, say, but first introduce our good friend Mike Paul Kingston, mm -hmm. winner of 1988, medal winner, mm -hmm. uh, to tell us about the story. Yep. Okay, ready? Right. So that's when you want me to look at the camera? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, the show? Okay. And then maybe, you know, maybe chime in to say, sure. uh, hey Paul, this is Bruce McGowan, and then get to mention your gotcha. name. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay. I don't want to <laughs> Now what television is this for? Uh, this is for uh, Comcast Channel 26. And oh. it, actually, you know it's on AT&T, okay. Channel 90. 99? 99. Okay. Yeah. okay. And he'll let us know when it's on. Okay. He, he has to do with editing. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with my co-host, radio personality Bruce McGowan and Vern Glenn of CBS KPIX TV in San Francisco. And I want to introduce a very good friend of mine, Paul Kingsman, who has an amazing story surrounding his 1988 bronze medal winning in the backstroke. Paul, take it away. Tell us about that story. Well, I trained for the event for, uh, for 13 years. From right when I was, I started swimming when I was eight. Um, and when I was nine years old, I set a, a goal to go to the Olympics and, uh, and win a medal after seeing the 1976 Montreal Olympics. And so I trained for 13 years. Um, goal time for the Seoul Olympics uh, was two minutes for the men's 200 meters backstroke. Uh, we had no guarantees that two minutes would win a medal. Uh, we had followed, uh, obviously, world swimming up until that point closely and, and believed that two minutes would be good enough to win a medal. Um, bearing in mind that we had had the uh, 1980 boycott in Moscow and the 1984, the rest of the, the other half of the world stayed away in LA, uh, which I was at when I was 17, uh, but believed that 1988 was, was our time. Um, and so put together a training program and uh, the goal was to swim two minutes and hopefully that would, would win a medal. Uh, so qualified, exactly right. in the, um, qualified in the, in the morning uh, with, the, with the swim in the, in the heats and uh, no New Zealand individual male had ever won a swimming medal. And so, swam the heat in the morning, made the final at night, came back for the top eight at night, and uh, was out in lane one, which is uh, second to last as far as New Zealand's concerned. As far as we were concerned, it was the seventh fastest. Uh, it didn't really matter because anybody that was in the final was in with a shot. And so, swam out in lane one, and um, 
he ended up winning a medal by four one hundredths of a second, won the bronze medal by four one hundredths of a second. Uh, it wasn't until uh, soon afterwards in watching the video that I actually saw the guy who came fourth to me uh, actually turned his head uh, with two strokes to go uh, and looked across at me. So if he didn't turn his head, then you would be in fourth place, no medal, that's not, and you wouldn't be on the show. I'd be having him on the show. Not the point. Not, not the point. No, it's not the point. It's okay. so funny because when I talk to different groups, I do a lot of uh, corporate speaking, and when I talk to different groups, oftentimes when I show the video, you get this, oh, no, the poor guy, and it's like, hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> if he hadn't have looked, I wouldn't have had this medal. <laughs> so, so, yeah, but you see how life changes in a split second. i got to ask you a question, though, because I, I body surf, and I still go out in the water quite a bit. Yeah. And... To me, getting out in the water, there's nothing better than it, but, and I love swimming, mm -hmm. but getting in a pool and just swimming lap after lap after lap, doesn't that get to be kind of boring? I mean, how do you, do you just get into a zen kind of a mode uh, and just sort of sort of relax and kind of just breathe easy and enjoy the, I, I, I just, uh, I used to swim when I was a kid and it drove me crazy going back and forth, back and forth in a pool. Yeah, yeah, now you get into a rhythm yeah. uh, and you're hearing uh, a rhythm just with the water in your, in your mind. Uh, in fact, it was funny because when I retired from swimming, my wife and I'd be walking on the beach or we'd be walking you know, through a mall or uh, you know, just walking down the road and, and she'd be listening to me and I'd be with each step, you just you know, you'd get into this cadence. Yeah. And so it's yeah, very rhythmical and, um, and, and you're looking for feel in the water. Uh, but yeah, it's just I, I was different though because I was backstroke. I got to watch the roof, watch the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, but you know, he, you know, he realized he was cut. You know, yeah. like those swimming athletes, oh, right? Sure. It's like uh, my wife and I were walking along the beach a couple of weeks ago, and we see these guys, and these guys look really, really cut. And my wife says, you know, um, God, these guys look like Chippendales. And I, I go, what about me? She goes, yeah, you look like Chip the Hoy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, now it's more like a whale when I walk along the beach. Uh, so, you got to remember, those guys are like 25, 30 years old. They're yeah. in their prime, prime years. They, they don't want to see, 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 see in yeah, yeah. She doesn't want to see in Speedos anymore, huh? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> So you know, your whole thing now is that you're talking about distraction mm. and you do motivational speaking. That's right. Yeah. Do motivational speaking mainly within the financial services industry, uh, which is an industry that I, I also work with them, uh, and talking to companies about overcoming distractions uh, and staying focused. Uh, and because of today, especially with the amount of distractions that, that people are just bombarded with uh, all of the time, it's, it's how to make the long-term uh, objectives relatable on a day-to-day -day basis and how to stay focused uh, on those particular steps that need to happen. So, I, yeah. I hate to tell you that you're, you're sitting right next to a walking distraction. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I also happen to be the father of two swimmers. Oh, really? So, yeah, I, I am right, dude. I am right in your wheelhouse yeah, you're seeing, every yeah. weekend. It's, right. it's, it's one meet yeah. after another. I've got, oh, uh, got a couple of breaststrokers, a couple of freestylers oh, that are trying to, uh, yeah. they're trying to, you know, yeah. Trying to dominate. Yeah. How old? How old are you? We go, uh, we go 14 and 8. Oh, you got the spread. Uh, we're right at the beginning of it. So we're bouncing in between J.O. Meads, Far Western Meads. Yeah. yeah, you've been there. You've got the T-shirt. Yeah. Probably got several of them. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got, you got kids playing. And these kids are also playing uh, Little League baseball, too. And my middle one yeah. is, uh, yeah, Little League, mm -hmm. CYO basketball, right. soccer. Right. So my wife and I are dividing and conquering. We're just all over the map. Well, I tell you, there's a lot more money in basketball and, uh, and baseball. <laughs> so go that track. No, Michael Phelps isn't doing too bad. Though. Yeah, well, for, for yeah. a few. For but, a of course, few he, had to win, he had to win so many, so many gold medals, though. Yeah, that's right. And now one of my biggest claims to fame was that I was uh, swimming with Dara Torres in 1984 when we were wow. training down in the Shibuya. Yeah. So that kind of became more the, uh, more the focus. Yeah, uh, but, that, you know, you talk about the swimming part, but yeah. I don't think he, these guys realize, you know, you hear the accent, right? I mean, he was a national hero for New Zealand. How many of New Zealand Olympians are there? There weren't yeah, too many. So uh, about twelve or so, maybe you're per. Uh, so all of the Kiwi yeah, nation on your shoulders. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. tell them the quick story about uh, the Commonwealth Games. I'm sorry. I know. It's, I know. I know. It's I always bug him about this because I, I ask him about Joe Montana and all that. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell. Yeah. No, the Commonwealth Games. So after the 1988 Olympics, uh, we had the Commonwealth Games two years after uh, in Auckland, New Zealand, which was my hometown. Um, and at that stage, everyone knew I was going to retire after that event. Uh, I had three TV commercials going at that time for a bank. Um, so everybody, I mean, a lot of people knew me down there. Um, and, and unfortunately, uh, I came second in the, in the turn of backstroke. And as you know, in sport, if you're meant to win and you win, it's great. If you're meant to win and you come second, you're lost. 
I mean, that's just that's just how it is. Yeah, no such thing as second. It's like, well, it's what like, happened? It's yeah. like, it's exactly. That was the first question I got asked. Sure. What went wrong? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, that was a, that was a tough one to uh, to swallow. I was walking actually back through the airport uh, several months later uh, to get married and, and had a um, two days after my swim actually the Commonwealth Games another New Zealand won uh, gold in the men's 200 meter butterfly. And I had a, had a little guy come running up to me and say, hey, you're Anthony Moss, you're Anthony Moss, who was the guy who won the show. <laughs> and I said, no, actually, my name is Paul Kinsman. And he looked at me and he just looked at me up and down and said, oh, yeah, that's right. You're the guy who blew it. Oh, man. Nice it's a great well, thing though about kids, though. They tell you, that, you know, there's no, they don't pull any punches. Yeah, but tell, and tell, 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 tell them what happened, though. Nine year old. <laughs> you can tell them, you know, why you, quote, blew it. What, what happened? What was the distraction? The biggest the biggest distraction were the, the TV commercials and, and doing the, the, the marketing stuff. And um, I mean, it's, it's easy to spot the obvious distractions. If I was to say, hey, guys, you know, this has been fun. Let's all go to the beach and, and let's get to know each other more. We'd know that's an obvious distraction. Mm-hmm. But it was a Super Bowl too. That's yeah, bad. well, that's yeah, that's my bad memory about America. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep I keep talking uh, about this every time. But I was going to Cal at the time. I was at, at Berkeley, so I you know, had got his 49ers. And uh, in 1990, if you remember, it was uh, it was a 49ers in the, in the Super Bowl final. So when I should have actually been resting between heats in the morning finals at night, the Super Bowl was being played. So I have a very as much as the nation wants to party on Super Bowl day, it just brings it back they to be resting. very bad. I think that was their, their fourth Super Bowl, too. They beat uh, Denver, if memory serves me correctly. I yeah. don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to cut to our uh, first commercial break here, and uh, here's the first trivia question, which you guys cannot answer until we come back to the break, all right? And the theme is uh, baseball roster teams, all right? We're going to start off kind of easy here. Which 1990 World Series team rostered Kent Herbeck, Chuck Knobloch, Jack Morris, and Kirby Puckett? First three callers, that's all they needed was just those four guys. Right. Uh, the first three callers with the correct answer win a free three day, two night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Call 888 660 4495. That's 888 660 4495 to answer this question. Which 1990s World Series team rostered Kent Herbeck, Chuck Knobloch, Jack Morris, and Kirby Puckett? Can I give him a hint? No, not yet. <laughs> 888. Yeah, I think I know this one. 888 660 4495. This is a hint that won't, uh, won't ruin it, though. They're the nicest bunch of guys you ever want to meet. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that, right. doesn't, that doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Make sure to include your name and your email address and speak slowly and spell out your email for us one letter at a time and don't touch that dial because Sports Econ 101 will be right back. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Fern Glenn! As sorry, I man. I, yeah, I, uh, I'm Paul. Paul. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Bruce, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you got Good to see you. I go way back. Yeah, too far back. It's yeah. interesting swimming at my uh, my oldest son. Um, this is just a release for because he wants to swim in college. Um, oh. He uh, he swims for <clears throat> he swims for a team called the Strawberry Seals, yeah. but uh, off season he trains. Uh, with the Marin Pirates. After, after this, after this, yeah, after this last rec league season, uh, he's going to go Pirates full time. So when he does these USA meets, he swims unattached because yep. the Seals really don't have a full blown, yeah. you know, it's not like North Bay. Yeah. Where, you know, where they just, yeah. So, um, uh, How so old is he? he's 14, 14, just turned 14. <laughs> wow. And he's, uh, he's Pretty swimming. Serious. He's uh yeah he's in uh, he's in that 22 23 50 free um, his uh, <laughs> his um, his breaststroke which is his signature stroke yeah. uh, that that's what that's what he gets to all the all, all the far western times he's yeah. he's uh, he's just uh, chumming right along and then we were just in Sunnyvale all day yesterday right. at the ten and under swim championships at Fremont High School with my eight year old who uh, who got go one overall first place two. Uh, second place overall medals for uh, twenty, you know, a couple of twenty-five threes in brass, and then a right. fifty-three. So what's in the family? Yeah. So well, well, my my, my wife was a swimmer. I mean, I, I'm good for a cannonball. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can belly flop like it's nobody's business. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's exciting. And he enjoys water. Yeah. Well, yeah, Warren, yeah. And and he and 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 kind of an extension of Warren, the the coach of the seals, a guy named Marad. 
I don't know if you know him, but he's the yeah, he's the he's the head coach. So just so they can put it on TV. Anyway, a funny story. The guy who taught me how to swim later became the voice, <coughs> radio voice of the Seattle Seahawks, the first one. A guy named Pete Gross. Oh. And this is should I should I introduce myself since I just well, I, I kind of hit the first segment. No, no, cold, that's okay. So I, I, I said uh, you know we're joined you know, by. You've got some length. Yeah. Like yeah, I, I wasn't that tall when I was younger, and I, I was in swimming, but not like risk boys yeah, were. Yeah, 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 a, a swim, you could have a swim club, but in those days, in the oh, yeah. 60s, okay. early 60s, mm. it wasn't. It was just you know more like a little club. <coughs> it's not as competitive as it is today. Oh, so these mics are ones. So, that are but he taught me how to swim. Right, seven years old, six years old. Right, right, right. And it's funny. Years and years later, I'm working in Seattle, and here's the guy who's a big name on the town. The radio up there, and I'm signed there. Your name sounds familiar. I said, Yeah, you got to teach him to run for this club. He goes, Yeah. So you taught me how to swim. Yeah. My T-shirt. He did the Seahawks for like 20 years on the radio. Big, big name. Real nice guy. Yeah, it's a great sport for rhythm. Uh, yeah. Well, it's the band. It's the best sport for your for your whole body, really. You know, you think about it. Oh, running yeah, just rhythm. kills your knees, your hips, your back. I stopped running about when I was 45 because I could just feel the hip, the knee, the back. Oh. You I, love, I, love, I love to hike. I just I, hike. Yeah. I'm not a big gym person. I like to go, you know, free weights and a yeah, little hiking work. and yeah. just, you know, surfing when I can. It's, it's, it's an everyday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and stretching. A lot of stretching. See that? As you get to be our age, you should do that more often. That's, I know. I Yoga, hate to stress this was yesterday. Like but you know, it just relaxes you. It, it, everything will That's flow more freely. And this, a lot of this, with your arms. You, know, you see old people doing this all the time because yeah. the shoulders get really tight. And yeah. that loosens up the scapula, uh-huh. that loosens up the back. Mm. And if you, if you, I, I took some massage mm-hmm. therapy. 1388. I had massage therapy. Yeah. And the guy who worked on me was a Hawaiian healer. And I, wow. I work on my wife's back, and her back is like a slab. Mm-hmm. Like, my geez, you are right. so tight. Yeah. This is, uh, I have to get in there with 25. my elbows. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost feel like I should do it. Today. I, I was going to say uh, it's, a, uh, it's a lot of work. <coughs> you can wreck your body doing it. Yeah. Because you're doing this. Yeah. yeah. You have to have a gift for it. So. Wow. But pro athletes swear by it. Okay. Yeah. They do. They swear by it. He's going to work on his dives this week. Yeah, yeah. You stress is this. Are you Teddy? All right. Let her have the okay, cap. Guys. And this will be, uh, yeah. This will be, uh, 53. Okay, look at that, yeah. Um, Paul, was there anything you wanted to finish up on? I'm watching this movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I apologize. That's impressive. I do want you to talk about, yeah, we're talking about this swimming, no money, and that thing, but I do I, I do want to get into the story about you going and doing the Calvin Klein, you know, you have your ID with you. Oh, that's a fun yeah, story. Um, and then we can get into And I got a story for you. Oh, okay. We'll save it for the, we'll save it for one day, but I am uh, just astounded by it. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, because the theme, the, the format here is a bunch of guys sitting around the bar. Sure. Just talking business and sports. Has Jason Collins come up? No, uh, yeah, I know we, we talked about that. Yeah, that right. something we should talk about. Okay. Definitely. And I don't. Uh, do, do you have an air date for this segment? It's till tomorrow, May fourth. May fourth. May fourth. It's not Wednesday. 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 Wednesday.
Um, at that stage, there was zero money in swimming. Um, the only reason why the TV commercials were there was because after the 88 Olympics, we had the 1990 Commonwealth Games in New Zealand. And so a bank um, asked me to do some uh, TV commercials for them. So I did three. Um, during that year, uh, I also did a, a jockey commercial. Uh, there was a, a, a center spread done by several of the All Blacks who were our, our top rugby team, um, several other, other athletes. And so I went into a men's clothing store one time and was purchasing a pair of jeans uh, with, and I had no ID on me. I had to cash a check, I had to write a check, um, had no ID on me, uh, no credit cards because we were coming back to, New uh, to the US to live. Uh, but up above, right behind this um, young lady who was the cashier was a poster of me, a uh, centerfold spread with just a pair of jockey oh, Centerfold. Yeah. 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 Um, keep it clean. Keep it clean. And, yeah. and so she said to me, uh, you're going to need ID with that check. And I said, I, I, I don't have any. Um, and so I, it was one of those moments where you feel stupid because you know what you're going to say. I needed the jeans. Uh, and so I said, if you actually care to look behind you, you're going to see a photo of me probably more than you want to see. <laughs> but it will tell you exactly who I am. Um, so anyway, she looked around, went bright red, uh, and was yeah quite happy to see me get out of the store. <laughs> 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 so you didn't, so you didn't have to pull the old, don't you know who I am? Yeah, no, no. Okay, no, no, I no, no. wasn't going to do that. Good story. Uh, I wasn't going to do that. Good story. Okay, you know what? Um, we were one of the topics that we didn't cover, or we didn't say we were going to cover, but I think you guys did bring it up was uh, the basketball player who just came out, Jason Collins. Jason Collins, Collins yeah. who just announced he's gay. Yeah. Right, and he it seems like he purposely waited until after the season was over. And I've been hearing things back and forth. I mean, the guy is he's seven foot tall, but he's thirty four years old. I mean, he's kind of uh, I don't even know if he's going to. Get picked up again. Well, he's, been well, played, what, he's, he's a free agent yeah. and he's been yeah. playing. The, 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 I think the story is that he's he's the first active player. It's not like he retired and then came out. He's, yeah. a, he's an actor, just play, fit, just finished playing with the Boston Celtics. So he, he, he's the first active player. I mean, he's out there. He is available to play. Now, whether yeah. he's going to sign with anybody in the offseason, I don't know, Bruce. But uh, that that's what got me. And then Bruce and I, you know, know him a little bit because we covered him when he was sta at Stanford. Yeah. Good guy. So uh, I, I, it was like, wow. I mean, and, and in fact, I was talking about this this morning in the dog park with um, Barry Tompkins. Oh, good. And, and, and the topic is, you know, is not just the Bay Area, but, but is, is the world ready for an active gay person? It had to happen at mm -hmm. some point. At some point. But, you know, it had, but it's bound to happen. Here's the thing. It's happened with women. And I think one of the oh, reasons yeah. it has happened with women is because the women's sports arena is not so testosterone driven. Yeah. Martina Navratilova came out. I mean, she didn't make a big deal about it, but she came out. Billie Jean King came out. Uh, there, uh, recently, Brittany Griner came out. But it's not as big a deal. Well, and our, I don't know, for some reason, I'm feeling like women are a little bit more respectful in that area. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about I it. I don't but think there's as much homophobic a homophobia among women. That, that's maybe, maybe that's what I'm I think that's yeah, the problem. Yeah, another Greg Leganis was, yeah. was coming out with yeah. when he was retiring. Uh, but again, it, didn't, it certainly didn't make the kind of headlines this is making. Now, is he get, I wonder if he's going to monetize it somehow. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think I, he needs to. Book, I don't or, think. I, he, I, I think he. I think. I think he will be uh, kind of free and, 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 and open to now talk about it now that it's out there. It's it's it's, it's on the cover of Sports Illustrated, so uh, I, I think he's there to, to to kind of talk about it. But as far as capitalizing on it, it doesn't seem like that kind yeah, of guy. Well, he doesn't need to. He's got a Stanford degree. Uh, you yeah. know, he's he's made good money. He has, he's not a a multi-billionaire, but he's yeah. made probably. But I, I didn't mean that he was, uh, I wasn't accusing yeah. him. No, 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 that's a good question. Right. That's, that's a good point. Know. No, no, it is a good point. But I think that he just felt that it was time. I mean, this guy's been living with this, quote, secret. And I guess his teammates were new about this. Mark Madsen, for instance, says that he's known him for 15 years, and he's always been supportive of him. Yeah, you're in the, as you guys know, I mean, you're, you're, you're in the clubhouse, you're in these locker rooms more than you are at home and with your own family. So I, I have to believe that all of his teammates probably knew, but it's not their place to step forward. It, it was up to, to sure. Jason, and and he went ahead and, and and did it. And they didn't feel uncomfortable enough to say anything, yeah. right? I mean, they were in the showers and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And they just they, 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 I mean, you, 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 I mean, these these are your brothers. It's your yeah. family. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you you roll the towel, you rat tail each other, you you, you have fun, sure. whatever. And but 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 what I want to know is when when is the when is the first marketable guy going to come out? When is 
when is the next LeBron James going to come out? Because from a from an economic standpoint, you know, James and these guys that are the spokesmen, I mean, they, they, these guys drive the bus sure. economically from an endorsement standpoint. And when that guy comes out, mm -hmm. then I'll be interested to see what happens. Oh, that, that, that's, a good, that's a good point. Well, I mean, you've got, you know, you've got all these, these corporations, whether it's, you know, Nike or, or, or Clorox or whatever, yeah. they're looking for pitchmen to endorse their product. Oh, yeah. and, 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 Edward, you can speak to this probably more than I can, but with these big companies, you've got shareholders you have to answer to. Oh, sure. You've got you've got pipe you know you got partners who have invested into this, and and so it, it's not like the CEO has has the final say on who is going to pitch our product. Well, no. Look what happens you know? when someone you know, an athlete quote gets into trouble. Mm -hmm. you know, let's say O.J. Simpson, right? And suddenly all of these endorsements, you know, they say we can't back this guy. And uh, or even they, recently, Tiger Woods. I was going to say yeah, yeah. Tiger Woods. Yeah, they said that they. Someone said that it cost golf a billion dollars. You know, you figure how many people weren't going to be watching if he wasn't going to be playing. That you know, now he's playing well again. But it's amazing how much money you're talking about. Oh golf. yeah. But oh yeah. Who's going to babysit these guys? Yeah. Nobody. 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 <laughs> yeah. Nobody. Nobody. I guess the, the wives, maybe. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, here's another topic here. Uh, insane salaries for the athletes. I, I'm just using that word insane. They are. They're cartoon like. <laughs> they really oh, are. Oh yeah, they, they, these are video game it's numbers ridiculous. That, That's that, true. that are being thrown out there. So how much does that really have an impact on the ticket prices, or is it a supply and demand? Now I'm going to throw my two cents in there for a minute. Okay. Part of me says it's strictly a supply and demand because if you pay, let's say Steph Curry, just as an example, 150 million dollars over three years, do you automatically say, well, that means we got to make, you know, we got to charge ten thousand dollars a ticket for the nosebleed section? Well, nobody's going to pay that, right? But if you do pay someone a lot of money, like LeBron James, mm -hmm. that is going to attract a lot more people. So you're going to have the demand. And so I'm kind of, um, so this is all just sort of surmising here, but I'm guessing the marketing people, it's sort of like a hotel room. You don't necessarily want to be 100% filled because if you're 100% filled, you probably didn't charge enough. And if you're 60% filled, you charge too much. So maybe you want to be close to like 95%. Same thing like an airline. Because right, once the game's uh, uh, over, the tickets work. That's why the yeah. That's why the A's are, are tarping off the, the Coliseum. The, the Raiders are going to tarp off the Coliseum this sure. year. Sure, yeah. Create that situation. And then across the way from there, let's go back to the We Believe year, two thousand and seven, with the Warriors. Once yeah. they made that playoff run, they sold more season tickets, and so there's less individual tickets available in that lower bowl. Now those season tickets have been sold, but I think the, I think the prices, the ticket prices, have have risen. Have. Maybe not oh, dramatically, yeah. but yeah, it's if you have like this year, they got a nice playoff run going. Will that impact it even more? I think so. It will, but again, that's more of a supply and demand. The guys necessarily. But, but how, how much? How much are those ticket sales go directly to the salaries that these teams pay these players? Well, there's, how oper much how but much there's costs? operating costs though too. Operating, yeah. operating costs, costs yeah. and, you, and you travel got, costs. You got TV revenue coming yeah. in, right? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. got uh, facilities that you got. You know, the practice facilities have to be kept, and the staffs of these. Professional teams that are huge. Yeah, they are. They are enormous. It used to be a baseball team that had maybe 25, 30 people in the front office. Now it's 150, 160 people there. Now, granted, they're not all making a lot of money, but they're making good bucks and they're they're getting full benefits. We're gonna have to get some team owners on here to kind of tell us how they divide up all the money. <laughs> and on, yeah, on, on on merchandising, how much of a cut does the league get? Yeah. How much do the cut of a cut does the team get? That'd be be nice to have somebody from the W's to come in. I, how about the how about the Giants though? They've opened up uh, two new stores in the city. I guess one new store, the Giants uh, dugout, oh, dugout store. store right? Yeah, and they're they're really taking advantage of their recent World Series. Well, that's the thing is, you win the World Series, suddenly yeah. everybody all around the world wants that. You know, yeah. for the years, the Yankees. I mean, everybody wanted a Yankees. You know, it didn't matter where in the world you were, kids were wearing Yankees hats. They, in New Zealand, is it the All Blacks are the big thing? Yeah. And did yeah. they did they uh, take advantage of that? Uh, oh yeah. 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 But they they just won the World Cup uh, last year. But the salaries that these players are getting are nothing compared to to pro, pro sport over here. I mean, it's a big deal down there if they're making a, between one and two million bucks. And the New Zealand Rugby Union makes a lot of money from it. You know, I'll, I'll play. Rugby for two million. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the are yeah. Ten times as big as I buy a lot of, uh, yeah. lot of insurance. But coming back to the pro that. stuff over here, I would assume. I mean, these guys are business people. They're looking and saying, "Hey, if we pay X amount to X athlete, how are we going to recoup it?" I mean, you have to assume that they're going forward looking at it as a pure business 
transaction. If it's X amount of dollars here, we're going to have to drive X amount of people through through the door, I would think. I know in, in rugby, in, uh, in provincial rugby in New Zealand, that's what they're looking at. We buy X amount of players. This is what we need to bring through that gate. So they've been on okay. the path. All right, guys, we're going to cut to our second commercial break, and when we come back, we'll get into uh, some more of the uh, topics we discussed earlier. Okay, here is the uh, second trivia question. Which 1980s World Series team uh, was seen with Carney Lansford, Dave Henderson, Jose Canseco, and Dave Stewart? The first three callers with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Call 888-660-4495. That's 888-660-4495. 660-4495 to answer this question. Which 1980s American League World Series team was seen with Carney Lansford, Dave Henderson, Jose Canseco, and Dave Stewart? 888-660-4495. And make sure to include your name, email address, speak slowly, and spell out your email letter for us one letter at a time. And don't touch that dial because we're going to be right back. My in-laws using the power washer and, and just just yeah. kind of helping out. This might want to met Zach. This is a Morgan Hill. That's a warm-up pool. Mm-hmm. This is a far western. So. Now you know it'd be fun to record something like this at like a sports bar. Oh yeah. And this is the fifty-three <laughs> that Zach right there. Northern view. Northern view. But you do it usually live when you do that, don't you? Yeah. Can you say he's uh, thirteen here. Usually they're not paying too much attention because they're they're not listening to what you're saying. Usually they're they're too busy watching the games and making a lot of noise. Yeah, the voice I was say, it gets kind of noisy. In, uh, we used to, I did a Raider post game show for two years over at um, this soul food restaurant in Jack London Square called Chicken and Waffles, and that was I was like walking onto a stage at, at barber shop, you know, that TV show. Yeah. I mean, it was just a, a local community place to hang out, and uh, we'd always get a player to come down. Which was neat. Oh, I'm here. 23.95. It was very best. Low key, though. You, you want know, to be on the 22. That's the thing I like about Raider players. They get a bad rap, but most of them are just. At the time, know, that was their best time. Real yeah. hardcore, you know. But uh, that's he the just. People who, he's got a nice field. He just wants to go. He just wants to go. Keep it lower. Keep it lower. It's so expensive. He's got a margin. Imagine him. No parking. He's watching him come off the wall. Yeah, food. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's see. Third segment here. That's good. It's. Was there anything specifically that you guys wanted to? Uh, well, anything um, specific? I, I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask you about uh, get, getting back to the whole marketing thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen any of this, but uh, this reality show with Ryan Lochte has just crashed and burned right. because. So, uh, they they gave him a reality show, just thinking, hey, you know, here's a guy, Olympian. Let's you know, let's make a let's like a little make a little reality series. The problem is, he can't talk. He can't. You know, he's great to look at, great swimmer. Sure. You know, but yeah. then they, they but he just, just have, is he just well, have a problem uh, expressing himself? Or? Well, he's just, he's just first of all, he's really laid back. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing controversial or outrageous about him. Just a normal guy. You know, he's just like a normal <laughs> yeah. guy. Just, yeah. you know, he, he, Nobody wants yeah. to see normal. He Nobody wants to get, see that. Nobody wants to see dysfunctional. Yeah, yeah. 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 you get him out of the pool. There's yeah. not, you know. Okay, we'll take that. We'll That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like okay. it. That's very good. Hold it in here. Yes. Got to crank him up. Crank him up. Okay. And then if you guys just want to wave at the camera when Welcome they Welcome back to you, Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Bruce McGowan and Vern Glenn. We're in the studio here with Paul Kingsman. And we cut to the second commercial break. We asked this trivia. We're just having too much fun. <laughs> we cut to the second commercial break. We asked this trivia question. Which 1980s World Series team was seen with Car- Carney Lansford, Dave Henderson, Jose Canseco, and Dave Stewart? Gentlemen, that's an easy one. Yeah, we covered them. Because you're from yeah. the Bay Area. Yes. That's right. The East Bay A's. Do we, do we reveal the answer? Now you can. Oh, that would be the Oakland A's. The Oakland yeah. 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 That is correct. Probably the best team. I mean, you have you could make a good argument for this. Maybe the best team in the history of the Bay Area. Although, Reggie Jackson would argue with me because 
because they won three titles and That's the Israel won one title, but they were in the World Series three times. Hey. And, and that eighty and that eighty eight team, maybe maybe the best team not yeah. to, to win, win uh, that year. Kirk, Kirk Gibson and Oral yeah. Hirsch. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. two guys out of the equation for the Dodgers and the A's win that thing. Well that Eckersley with that slider is just a uh, slider. Backdoor slider. And backdoor Kirk slider. Gibson, yeah, we're the, I, know, I know you're driving the bus on this, no, but okay. we're talking no, about no, this during yeah, the break. Go ahead. I, but, but I wanted to bring you in there, but back to the swimming world. Uh, this this reality show with Ryan Lochte, because somebody wanted, you know, they, they saw what he did in the Olympics, mm-hmm. and, and, and he was, you know, he was kind of like magnetic at what he did. Sure. You know, especially with the backstroke. That's yeah, your thing, that's okay? Right. That's the real so, you strike the count. So, so there were enough, <laughs> there were enough people with, with deep pockets that hey, let's, Let's let's throw a couple of cameras on him, follow him around. Let's make a little reality series out of Ryan Lochte, and then, boom! Oh, not it just it just well, just nothing to him. Yeah, nothing to him. take him away from the pool. That that's it. Yeah, got nothing to say. Yeah, you know, I mean, nobody wants to. You know, and, and apparently, just there just weren't enough viewers that wanted to see him go to the pool well, hall you, and shoot pool. Do you remember yeah. the movie Rocky Two? Oh sure, remember yeah. When Rocky, yeah, yeah. he's trying to do the commercial, right? And yeah. The kids can't do yeah. The yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> right. Who is this guy? Get right. out of here! Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people see the athletes in their environment, and they think, great, if they can do it in that environment, they can do it anywhere. Mm-hmm. But they don't realize the reason why they're so great in that environment is that's their one environment. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they can move outside of it, and you get some great athletes that can go on and be great commentators or. Now with what we're seeing in reality TV, although I don't want to use the word great and reality TV in the same sentence, <laughs> um, so, you know, some can carry over to that. Um, the majority the majority can't. But because of the way our culture is today, where we can grab a phone and turn anybody into an immediate, again, I don't want to say celebrity, but uh, somebody that would seemingly substance by them, uh, which we make a mistake in doing, the thinking is that they'll just go on and be able to do anything. What we don't realize is just because they have notoriety mm-hmm. doesn't mean there's too much substance there. I'm certainly not saying that about Ryan because as a swimmer, he's brilliant. But relative to TV production, substance. Well, yeah, how many, how many guys went from basketball trying to be a commentator? And it took, sometimes it takes the uh, producers like three or four times re- realizing that these guys just yeah. can't do it. Well, look at Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yeah, I mean, he, he flew a plane. He, was, he, he flew yeah. a plane on, on an airplane. And that's what he did a great job. Um, well, the, the thing is with, you know, when you put them in front of a camera, they have to speak, you you, you know about this, Bruce, they got to speak in 20, 15, 20 second sound bites. Yeah. You know, it's like, a, all right, coach, great. Now do it in 20 seconds, you know, yeah, from some 25 yeah. year old kid in the in yeah. the TV truck that's trying to keep the broadcast going. But yeah. few people can cross over. Terry Gannon is one mm-hmm. who, uh, who does play by play for ABC, but nobody remembers that Terry Gannon was on the 83. NC State basketball team that shocked Houston oh, in the NCAA yes. championship. There we go. Well, yeah. people like and people like dysfunctional behavior. They, they it makes them feel more comfortable about themselves because we all have our hidden, you know, scary things about us, and and, and, they, and they like it when they see somebody on television. They think, hey, that person's kind of crazier than I am. Yeah. I heard an interesting story uh, recently. I had JT Snow on the uh, stage with me at the Throckmorton Theater in Mill Valley, and I asked him about Jeff Kent starring in the. Uh, Survivor show, right? Yeah, and I asked him. I said, you know, why would he do that? He goes, oh, you know, Jeff Kent just loves the challenge. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, I guess there was more than the challenge going on at that thing. Was, well, they got hurt in the yeah. first episode. Yeah, he, he twisted his knee. But or, did he keep competing uh, in the thing, or uh, he stayed out? He did. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. yeah, he was. He was on there for a good solid four or five episodes yeah. before he got voted off, and he was pissed when he got <laughs> voted off. Well, can you imagine if he was still playing for the Giants or, or you know, Mets back then? I mean, how many players? want to do stuff like this and their contracts that oh you yeah can't you can't do it. yeah look at brian jenner i mean look at what he's done with the kardashians yeah bruce, bruce jenner oh bruce jenner, jenner. Yeah. Yeah. Brian jenner. bruce Wait, jenner mrs kardashian yes yeah. yeah or mr kardashian yeah he's carved out a, a totally different world yeah mm-hmm. and that is a but yeah, this is different that was, oh yeah that was, that was after the olympics that's right yeah. you know what it, i thought was amazing is someone like um cal ripken jr you know, it's one thing to say, okay, Lou Gehrig, you know, uh, Hall of Famer, awesome, and all that, you know, Iron Man, but, or Iron Horse, and to think, though, but he played first base. Cal Ripken played shortstop mm-hmm. and third base. I mean, that is a scary position. Plus, I understand on the off, in the offseason, he played basketball. Oh, sure. I mean, I've been hurt playing basketball, and, you know, that would have put me out for sure, you know, it actually did put me out for a year <laughs> when I, uh, you know, twisted the ankle. And this guy, like, practically never got hurt. 
He was, in, he, he was in great shape yeah. the whole time. I worked in Baltimore and covered the Orioles when he was playing. In fact, in fact, he was shortstop. Billy Ripken, his brother, was yeah. second base, and Cal Senior was the manager. Yeah, I remember. When I first got Amazing. to Baltimore, he was just he was just a great athlete. He could just do anything. I mean, he, he could play and pick up basketball, whatever. He could just pick up a ball, and just be good at it. Yeah, he's just kind of a freak. One of those guys too. I don't think anybody ever said anything bad about him. No, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's and when he retired, yeah, but you know what? He 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 followed the philosophy of. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. And that's why that's why everybody loved him. My enduring memory of him is I went and covered the 2001 um, All-Star game in Seattle. Yeah. And I had, hate to say this, I had to go to the bathroom. And when I went to the bathroom, I had this great roar. Cal Ripken had just hit the whole run. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> well, that was great when he got on the horse and he, he yeah. would throw it around the stadium. You know, oh, yeah. To fight for. It's great stuff. Yeah, it was great stuff. I remember, I remember that well because I was on my honeymoon up in Canada and we're watching TV when he broke the record. And my wife is not into baseball, but she put up with me. Watching it, she said, what, "What's going on?" I said, "Cal Ripken setting the record. Who's Cal Ripken?" Oh, yeah. you know, oh. yeah. you know it's funny. my wife the oh. same thing. She doesn't really like baseball, but she actually watched, the, and she just really yeah. had to get into it. I guess yeah. with all the you know motions the game. Sure, guys, I got to tell you the story. Speaking of Baltimore, okay, I the true story. I'm not making it up for the sake of TV or radio. In the doctor's office, checkup, nurse is taking my blood pressure. And she's going on and on. Oh, I love the Broncos. Oh, just a huge football fan. Oh, it's just, it just going on and on and on. I'm like, oh, okay, great. And then she goes, well, who did you like, you know, growing up? What, you know, what's your, you know, what's your team? I go, well, when I was growing up, I liked the Baltimore Colts. Blank stare. You know, I thought, what did I say something wrong? And, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and uh, she goes. What, what, no, you mean Indianapolis? Go, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I said and I said. Did you know that the Colts were in Baltimore before they were in Indianapolis? Blank stare. Just yeah. like, oh, my God. She didn't know. I mean, I was just, I, I, I take it for well, granted. How, 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 how old was she? Was she get late 30s? I mean, yeah. come on. Well, you know, okay, I got, a, I got a fun story for you here. When I was 14 years old, and this is back in 1974, and I was a, a big baseball fan, specifically of old baseball, baseball cards, stuff like that, right? My mom's uncle came to visit us, and he was old back then. He, he looks at me and he kind of talks to me like this. He goes, "Hey Eddie, you like baseball?" Because he saw me looking at the cards, right? I said, "Yeah, I go, I love baseball." He goes, you, "You like a old baseball?" I said, "Yeah, I love old baseball." Okay. This is a guy. He was in his nineties, smoked a massive, a big stogie and a Limburger cheese at the same time. Goes, oh wow! He goes, "Come here, give me a kiss." I go, yeah. oh, okay. right, I'll okay. see you later. Okay. I'll see you later, right? Let's so just said, shake hands. Well, yeah. he goes, you, you, "You ever heard of Hans Wagner?" And I go. Hannes Wagner? He goes, yeah, we used to call him Hans Wagner. He grew up in Pittsburgh, and he used to watch Hannes Wagner wow. play. Wow. wow. I go, man, that, to me, I, mean, I just, I got chills thinking about hey, that. Hey, the thing about Hannes Wagner was before Ty Cobb. I mean, they yeah, played at the same time, right. but he was before him. Yeah. So that's really going back, turn of the century. Boy, you talk about reality. Just walk down the financial district today, just scream out Hannes Wagner, see how many looks you get. It's, it's I wonder. Paddy Wagon's going to come pick you up in a minute, take you off to the hospital. Yeah. I mean, how many people are named Hannes? Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Which, for some reason, that reminds me, um, just off the cuff here, records that, quote, will never be broken. And I, yeah, I know records will be broken, you know. Uh, but, and I think specifically of baseball with, uh, you know, Joe DiMaggio's hitting streak. But the one, I, Bruce and I were talking about this before, the one that I think I'm going to have a hard time believing will be broken is Cy Young's 511 win. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, I mean, no. think about it. How Nobody's going to touch that. Yeah. It just, it's no chance. virtually impossible to pitch that many innings, especially when you get, you know, managers like Sparky Anderson with the quick book. Well, how about 30 wins now? With uh, with five man rotations, that'll never happen again. Did some they, of those guys back then in the 20s, didn't they? Did they pitch headers. both yes. double headers back well, then? Yeah, sometimes they would. Yeah, you got to remember in those days the rosters were smaller and pitchers, <laughs> and there was you know, there were fewer teams. So if you were a good pitcher, uh, you know you were in good shape, good enough shape, and you pitched through the the hurts. Now everybody is overly protected. They have late inning specialists and middle inning yeah, specialists, yeah. and you know. Well, the funny thing is too about like when I've mentioned this to other people, they go, oh, "Yeah, uh, Ty, uh, uh, Cy Young, uh, yeah, but that was the dead ball era." Yeah. yeah, but wait a minute, though. They each pitched with the dead ball. Right. Yeah. It wasn't That's just right. him. That's exactly right. Uh, God, do, they even, do they even ice down? I, you know, they, they, they probably do. They probably put some kind of, uh, I don't know, home, oh, home remedy or right, something. Right, right. Well, they, they didn't have, uh, they'd have to go to the ice truck. Yeah, right? They didn't have refrigeration. That's, That's right. True. Yeah. All right, true. just 
spend an hour in the ice truck there, Ty. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. Let's get into this just a little bit here. Athletes um, collecting workers' compensation when mm. they get hurt. Well, usually they're they're guaranteed uh, contracts. Most of them, unless they play pro football. Pro right. football players have you know usually they get this long deal like a six year deal or <laughs> five year deal, but only one or two years is guaranteed. Yeah, because you're playing for the signing bonus. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. So I mean, I don't think you need it nowadays because of the the money they're making. It's not that they don't need it; they'd like it. No, but so, I, no, but people they're actually collecting it though. So yeah, some of these athletes. I know. You know, I know. Joe Montana's collecting. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the arthritis. And I get, well, I mean, they'll say they'll say, hey. Didn't I work for a living? No, oh, no. Just because I had a high visible you know, job, no. does that mean I can't get workers' comp? Yeah, now if he gets hurt playing in practice, it just doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter whether you're in practice or in a game. You still you're hurt, you still hurt. Work. Yeah, you're still being employed by the team. So, I, know, yeah. I know, there's just something that seems. Uh, I know, makes you want to take a shower. Like, uh, well, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. It's like, you know, a guy making $10 million a year and says, yeah, but I want my $1,000 a month. No, I, would, I, would, I would have no problem with that if it was from, you know, 1970 or before. Because yeah. you hear it, some of what is happening, especially in the NFL, with some of these older guys yeah. that, that are hurting and they're hurting financially. And they can't get them. The, the league or the uh, the players union isn't supporting them. Gene Upshaw, of all people, the late great yeah. Gene Upshaw, who was the players union uh, rep, you know, the president, uh, was always standing up against them. And he was one of them. I never figured that one out. No, I guess he was, you know, looking out for the current guys. And you get guys today making money. I mean, guys that couldn't even carry the jock strap of some of these other guys. Oh, yeah. Struck well, yeah, you, you could say that, but the athletes today are still pretty good. They no, no, they're good. But you remember yeah. in the old days, like with uh, Ted Williams and all that, those guys had. Had to work for a living. Yeah. Oh yeah, in the off season. Yeah. Yeah. So you had to go get a, yeah. Yeah. They had to get a job like Paul over here. Yeah. Well, you know, we're talking about that. That was a big thing when rugby went professional down in New Zealand. These guys were most of them farmers, and so they would finish work on Friday. They would bus up to Auckland to play a test match against Australia. And so when professionalism came into rugby, it was only it's only been in there for maybe the last 20 or 25 years. Oh. Uh, and that was very small compared to pro sport over here in the US. Mm. And, uh, yeah, but uh, making. Um, Million, two million in New Zealand. I'm not sure how. how it's only that. it's only now that they make it sort of the, between the million to, to two million. But it's a standard of living, like the dollar. Yeah, what's the cost of yeah, living? It was not better. Yeah, yeah pretty that's similar. Question, pretty, right? pretty similar to here. Is yeah. it? I mean, uh, over I don't here, know if I can live so. on two million. <laughs> <laughs> You will, and you, you like, and you'll like it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have another. That's right. Okay, guys, we're going to cut to our third and final trivia question break. In the 1970s World Series team, which featured George Foster, Dave Concepcion, and Pete Rose, the first three callers with the correct answer are going to win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is Lighthouse for Fun. Call 888-660-4495. That's 888-660-4495 to answer this question. Which 1970s World Series team was seen with Names like George Foster, Dave Concepcion, and Pete Rose. Make sure you include your name, email address, speak fully, and spell your email for us one letter at a time. And don't touch that bell, because we are going to be right back. Do you have a, a rate card for that place? For your place? The vacation place? You're... Oh, uh, well, it's, it's, it's private. Uh, I mean, most, you know, I, you know, obviously, but you know, it's a private resort that people pay Almost like a timeshare, but but not right. timeshare. Right. So my uh, my trip to Vegas got canceled oh. yesterday. I was supposed to go to Vegas this weekend for what? For, uh, for the Mayweather Guerrero fight. Oh, so you're on the whip. but because of but but yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. the success of the like Doves, it just ruined. It, it just oh. destroyed everybody's. Yeah. I get the feeling we're gonna have it's to. It's fun to get up the kids. Oh, so oh, I, I oh, oh, so so why? Because I want something to go back up the Denver, even though it's a good place right now. It's just. He's playing hurt. Oh, I don't know how long you keep this. Well, one leg, the other yeah. guys are good, but they the fun thing about it, here's the question: When people can, join, they can trade for a timeshare. Can they win Hawaii. one game? Yeah. That's what I'm going to ask you about. Three. The next three. three. They should be able to win. Okay, it's been on my notes. Because they'll get Michigan. one at home. Yeah. So they, they'll have to. If they don't win this one, they'll join us. And then they they join us. They get the most. And that game's probably going to be like a five p.m. So it's just joining a club. Thursday's game. Probably because it'll be Thursday night. Probably because I want to have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't piss me off. I got to fill in for Kevin the Rat. I'm going to be able to go. 
Okay, so we're we're okay. So I missed the second game of the World Series, but their first one I missed the World Series game. Two. We only have two minutes and fifty seconds left for two fifty. To fill two 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 fifty. I think we can eat that up. Yeah, no problem. So we come back to the trivia question, and I'm going to take the last minute and a half to go over this, and we we can only talk here. Yeah, we need to talk for about a minute. Yeah, just 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 say hey, we're running down on time, and then what you can just, you just drive us around. It's four fifteen. Yeah, four four fifteen. Okay. Take exactly right. see Iron Man three. Oh, you're yeah, right. That's Robert right. Downey Jr. Right. is a friend of mine on Facebook. Don't ask me how that happened. I don't know. I, All right. I, I don't I, I don't know how that happened. He's cra he's crazy too. You can look go to his little Facebook page. He's, you can see why he's got you know why he's. Recovering. Well, he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's been up, knocked down, and yeah. back up again. Brilliant actor, though. I have to yeah. give him some. Um, okay. So, yeah. I'll just say any closing things. So, we're going to cut off here in a couple of minutes. Okay. Any closing remarks there, uh, Bert? Sure. Okay. All right. Ready? Let's do it. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn and Bruce McGowan. We're in the studio here with Paul Kingsman. We're going to be uh, cutting to the, here's the third commercial break trivia question. Which 1970s World Series team was seen with names of George Foster, Dave Concepcion, and Pete Rose? Oh, you know, with George Giants. Foster was with the Giants, you know. That's right. That time. They right. traded him away. Little and, uh, known fact. Yeah, that was a little known fact. So was Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan was a Giant. And, and an A's player. And an A's player. Yeah. Yeah. None of these three were all blacks. No. No, they weren't. That's <laughs> just my piece. They were black. They were black. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Pete Rose. Of course, what a lot of people don't know is the all black means. That's right. It has nothing to do with race. No, no. It's the color of the, of the jersey, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what's the answer to the question? The, question? the big red machine. The Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Cincinnati Reds. Red. Cincinnati Reds, okay. Uh, Vern, we only have a couple of minutes. Let's get a quick minute left. So, any closing remarks? I'll get in and get out. I just, just by the time our audience hears this, I hope, I hope, we're talking about the W's and the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, that's the there you go. That, that's, that is the Warriors for all you non-California people out there. Okay, hey guys, you know what? Um, we're actually going to have to cut out here. And I want to thank my uh, guest, Paul Kingsman, 1988 bronze medal. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, Vern Glenn of uh, C excuse me, CBS affiliate KPIX TV and Bruce McGowan, sports radio personality. And here's our thoughts for the day. When I was a kid, my mom told me that the average person spends nine years of their life in front of a television. So, of course, I responded, you know, it would be a lot less if there weren't so many commercials. And, uh, yeah, that didn't work. She still made me do my homework. And uh, remember to all you sports jocks, sex is not the answer. Sex is the question. Yes is the answer. And with that sage advice, we invite you to tune in next week to Sports Econ 101, where we're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and giving away free vacation for answering trivia, sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. So long. All that's right. it. That's a wrap. All right. That's a show. That's a show. That's a show. Excellent. Oh,